and Spock go ice fishing. Well, don't you know, Kirk and Spock were out for a Sunday drive in their new shuttlecraft, wearing their good clothes and getting pretty good mileage to boot. Just cruising along, not exceeding the speed limit. They're good boys, you know. When the darn thing breaks down. It's still got the gosh darn dealer plates on, but it's deader than the bacon we had for breakfast. So they crash on the nearest planet, which turns out to be colder than Duluth in January. But they walk around the shuttlecraft a couple of times, shaking their heads. Looks like we're stuck here, Spock. <laughs> Looks like. Might have some good ice fishing, though. <laughs> yeah, sure, might have. Well, yump and yiminy, it starts to rain, of all things. So they grab all the food their mothers packed for them and hightail it into a cave. Seems like things couldn't get much worse, but just as Jimmy's cutting into the sour cream coffee cake, don't you know Spock comes down with the pond far. Well, for gosh sakes, this place is more deserted than the Elks Club on Sunday morning, and there's not a young lady in sight, let alone a pretty blonde one from a nice family, so you could settle down and start giving your mother some grandchildren. But Spock's turning greener than the sprinkles on the Christmas cookies. Spock! Are you feeling irpy? Well, the Vulcan's gone more silent than my dead Uncle Poot. So Kirk offers him everything in the cupboard. Bubble up, chips and dip, red jello with carrots in it. He even tries putting a dollop of Miracle Whip on top, knowing how them Vulcans like salad. Three kinds of pie, even the Rice Krispie bars that he was saving for company. Spock refuses them all, even when Kirk tells him polite, Please eat them, Spock, then I can wash the pan. Finally, he offers to reheat Amanda's hot dish and even crumple some fresh Lay's potato chips on top. And Spock throws it against the wall. Well, they can never go home now, not after breaking Amanda's good hot dish dish. Kirk is getting fed up and impatient for an afternoon nap. So he sits Spock down and says, Now you just listen up here, young mister. Straighten up and fly right or I'll knock you into the middle of next week. Jim... It's the pond far, don't you know? Well, I swan, says Kirk. He hasn't been this surprised since the firehouse burned down. But he didn't just fall off the turnip truck. He grew up on a farm. He knows what the pond far means, and he should have seen it coming a mile off. He knows there's no jolly and Spock out of this with the latest Sven and Ollie joke, even if it is a dilly. Meanwhile, Spock is thinking that those tight pants have Jim's behind wrapped up prettier than the prize bunt cake at the church bazaar. Any chance I can slip you the sausage, Spock asks. Kirk is pretty sure he isn't talking about the one in the bottom of the picnic basket that his Uncle Snowball gave him for his birthday. You know Jim's Uncle Snowball, don't you? Lives up to the Twin Cities? Nice fella for an albino. Now what was I saying? No, don't tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Kirk gives Spock a look over, never having thought about something unnatural like that. Jimmy's had more girls than you can shake a stick at. He's a real heartbreaker who's given his mother plenty of grandchildren, but none of them named Kirk, if you get my drift. Well, he thinks, Spock's kind of funny looking, like all his folks, but he's a good boy, not full of sass like a few I could name. I'd hate to lose such a good friend, especially when he's got those tickets to the ice hockey. And it can't be worse than that trip up to the lake when Sam and me dern near got bit to death by mosquitoes. And God willing, it'll be over soon and we can have a bowl of cereal and go to sleep. So what do you say there, Jim? I need an answer on the double. Can you help me out here? Yeah, you betcha. So they take off their good clothes and fold them neat. They're good boys, you know. And I'm not going to tell you what they did, because you know dern well, and if you don't, well, go ask your cousin Marl. He went to Grand Forks once and got into 12 kinds of trouble before we brought him home. Married my neighbor's girl Peggy last spring, you know, the one with six toes on her right foot. Piscopalian, but good folk. And don't you know that girl can dance? All right, stop all that noise and I'll finish the story. Turns out that the pond far is a darn sight nicer than being bit by mosquitoes. So Jim and Spock switch places and go again. Seems only fair, don't you know? And when they're done, they have some milk and cookies. And just as they're settling down for a good nap, Dr. McCoy shows up. Well, it's wake up and smell the loot fisk. He feels kind of bad, don't you know, because he's got a special sausage he was planning to give Jim for Christmas. 
but it's clear that come December it won't be his sausage that Jim will be warming. So he cuts himself a good-sized piece of yellow cake with the chocolate pudding frosting and says, Now if that don't beat all. And that was a heck of a deal. <laughs>